set up in 1968, TCS is one of the oldest tech companies in India. Today, it is also the largest. In the 54 years since TCS was launched, the company continues to reinvent itself, keeping pace with the new opportunities that the fast changing world is throwing up. Not only closely connected with the company, but also to the industry and shaping it, Mr. S. Ramadurai, former MD and CEO of TCS, is regarded as a professional manager who acted entrepreneurially to create and grow TCS. He was groomed to undertake this task by the founder of TCS, Mr. Fakir Chand Kohli. In this episode of The Shapers of Indian Enterprise, Mr. Ramadurai talks about the importance of business institution building in the making of the future of India. Can I ask you to first start by telling us what are the lessons of institution building that you learned out of working with TCS, working in the software industry? Few lessons I have learned along the way. The learning is a continuous process. It's not a one-time learning like you went to the college or the school and then you applied whatever you learned just in the beginning or years you graduated. In the IT industry and more so today in any industry, I think it's a lifelong learning and every day is a learning experience. Second thing we learned was learning, research, application of that and measuring the outcomes was very, very integral to our way of thinking. That is when you start looking at whether the ideas have resulted in an application and it has the potential to scale up or not. The third was the importance of building human capital which was a way of life within this company and the industry which followed to make sure that you learned and you are empowered and you focused on the right kind of things in terms of satisfying a customer. Retention of a customer and loyalty exhibited to the customer to give a value proposition because of your learning was very integral to what we did. So these are the kind of things which we learned the scale up happened by two or three ways. One is mining the client very deeply. You start with one engagement and then you continue. Or alternatively, you take that knowledge to a similar set of customers in the same industry or apply technology to a completely different industry. And those were the kind of things which enabled this to grow. Of course, in between a few things came up with regard to the Y2K or the internet revolution or the transition from the large computers to mini computers to personal computers and then to internet, etc. So those were the transition points. In uh, the case of uh, the Indian industry, in particular, apart from the technology breaks and global developments, including collapses like Y2K building up and then collapsing, uh, infrastructure was a big problem. We didn't have the roads, the highways, electronically speaking. Was it really possible to even think of it when you were fighting to get a 64 kbps line in those days? I think these were very, very big challenges one had to face. The only reason we were able to perform as a team was to build a set of people who would never give up and this can-do attitude was the one which said we have got to make a difference because we believe in this country and the technology is a way to enable with the people competencies. Even if you have to initially focus only outside the country in terms of exports, the learnings will someday percolate into it as the regulatory framework changed. So we put it up, put up with that kind of environment against all odds. I think disruptors invariably always face the problems head on and then try to address every single challenge that comes along the way. You never give up. If you had given up probably, if you had given up probably, the industry would have never come. 
So, you know, when I look back at all the things that you have just said in the last few minutes, they all center around two pillars, people and technology. Correct. Technology is changing. You have to be a learner. You have to learn to apply the learning. You must be committed to a customer. You must be persistent. And the people part is an attitude. Now, in a country, if you think back in 1960s and 70s, pre-liberalization, when TCS took root, where everything was <laughs> hopeless, you know, in the more traditional segments of industry and economy, uh, how did you foster this amongst people? Is it just the youth that was coming in, which was by nature positive, or was there something else? No, there are two, two or three things. One is the group like Tata's, the leadership of the TCS like uh, Mr. F.C. Kohli, with the support of the board members of Tata Sons, are willing to go ahead of the times in terms of investments and in terms of trying out new things. Automation was one of those needs. Automation with regard to the back office accounting was the way it started. But more importantly, to relate to the world. We being professionals who had an education abroad and came back, we were able to relate to the market outside because we were educated there, we could understand the culture, we understand the problems that need to be addressed. That played a very critical role in our building an industry and more importantly, building a corporation like TCS. When you do that, you can attract a lot of good people who are willing to emulate you in addition to the out of 10, if nine people go abroad, at least there is one who is willing to bet on what you are doing. That's how we incrementally build the uh, workforce and the competencies and that started expanding in a big way. Every success led to another success in spite of all the challenges, but essentially a belief in ourselves and belief in the team we built around us and with the support of the owners or the stakeholders as we call it. So you're saying recruiting a bunch of people, especially at the middle to senior level, who have seen the world, who have seen a different way of seeing things from India, brought in the fresh perspective. Correct. And having the youth, young people coming out of engineering colleges, who could say, wow, is there, that is also there. Because I think I would say most of the TCS people would have gone abroad for the first time on TCS work. Correct. I doubt if many of them would have no. uh, nowadays. Now tell me one more thing, Ram. Um, in people terms, today, TCS is reported to be recruiting 100,000 people per year. Even in your days, you used to recruit in four digits. That became five digits. Yeah. Um, that's the number of people Tata Steel would have recruited in a century. I mean, you know, the whole HR process is... Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how... Did you automate that also? Yes. What we did was we created a digital platform and we put an enormous amount of content in it in terms of uh, learning in terms of various subjects. You as an aspiring employee in an organization like TCS, you had access to every single material which we use in terms of programming languages, in terms of how do you design a system, in terms of whatever uh, rigor you need to bring in in terms of quality inspections, etc, etc. Like open source, it is available on the platform for anybody to look at it. The moment you start looking at it, it's not just the IITs or the IIMs or the other engineering colleges like IIIT, etc. But the smallest colleges across the length and breadth of the country with the communication being available, we are able to look at hundreds of thousands of people who may want to make a career. The fact that we give them a year or more to even go through the content and be ready for an interview, that makes all the difference to scale up across the system. And you unearth a lot of potential, not only from these institutions. If you look at the total IIT entrance examination, the JE which people take, it's almost 15 lakh of people who take, and it almost takes only 1 lakh, so 1 out of 15 lakhs. So I think there is an enormous amount of capabilities that's available who would make a career after going through this kind of a thing. The rigor which we bring in once they go through the content is something which is, we are able to do 
in scale in terms of recruitment and already they are trained in some of the things which we wanted them to learn. So the application of that in a real life environment becomes possible, otherwise it couldn't have been done. In addition, of course, uh, at least I am aware that TCS and other companies I'm sure also have set up their own Training campuses. centers. You probably run a university yeah. in terms of the throughput of people there. And we have expanded the campus to uh, network across the country. It's not in one location like we started in Trivandrum or something. No, we have it across the country and also international locations. Just persisting on this people matter, um, lots of things have changed in 50 years obviously. Uh, in the early days, uh, a middle class chap would be very grateful for a job in a TCS or an Infosys or whatever. Uh, today there is a problem of the reverse, the attrition part of it. What does that reflect as a sociological change in the country? Does it show there are more opportunities for young people or does it show greater ambition in their mind or an inability of the organization to respond to their ambitions? What do you think well, it it's is? It's a combination of all the three. The reason the entrepreneurial energy has been unleashed in the country like no other time in history. People coming out of the colleges or even while they are in the colleges are not shy of trying something new along with their friends, colleagues, whatever. And then accepting failure as a stepping stone to making a success out of what your idea is. Second thing is socially the families, the parents, the uncles, aunts, who also are, are supporting are accepting that failure and trying out something new is absolutely fine. You don't need to have only a corporate job or you don't need to go for higher education to the uh, universities abroad. So when all these forces are playing, the opportunities for whatever you want to try to become an entrepreneur, to do a startup or join a corporate or leave a corporate because you can start something on your own or join another corporate or go for academic education. I think all these factors are playing with the result Every person, if they are good, if they are confident, the family support is very much there, they are willing to take the risk. So what you narrate is uh, very interesting for a person to see what is the impact of institution building, building a whole uh, industry and the impact it has on social change. I'd like to spend a little bit of time on the social change part. If my memory serves me right, around the time you and I started our careers, the employment in this could have been counted in hundreds if not maybe thousands. Uh, today it is close to 3-4 million uh, as far as I am read. Right. Now, it has created a new aspiration amongst people in India that business can be a force for the good. Can you share a little bit about some of the observations or milestones that you have seen in terms of the social change of this industry, apart from its profits and market cap and all that stuff? The first social change is an inclusive employment generation across the length and breadth of the country. Second social change is the gender parity in terms of women being a part of the workforce, including in manufacturing of hardware products where women are seen in shop floors today which would I never imagined when we grew up. The third social change is the employment generation across every segment of society and across the length and breadth of the country. What I mean by this is if your father was a mason, if your father was a coolie, if your father was a security guard versus if your father was from the Indian Administrative Service or a corporate uh, uh, person, Irrespective of that, they were absorbed into the organization because the scale required that kind of a penetration and also the technology percolation happened. But the result, the social change that has been brought out and you see the people and how families have been transformed is a textbook case and this is one of the few countries that has demonstrated at scale. So when you say if 7 lakh people are employed in TCS, even if you just multiply a factor of three, you're talking about 21 lakhs additional jobs to support this kind of a workforce. So to me, those are something extremely important. And being a Tata value system and the culture, if you have set up an operation in Indore, if you have set up an operation in Coimbatore or wherever, the adjoining communities, how they benefit from whatever you're doing, whether with regard to employment generation, uh, restoration of the environment, the lakes being restored, etc., etc. 
the social consciousness has become a way of life and that is getting applied and we are seeing it at scale. That's the way I would put it, the social contribution. Sometimes in social chit chat, and I advisedly use those words, uh, people think of Indians as being jugadu and trying to take shortcuts and the corruption, all that stuff. Somehow, this is a creature that has emerged from the same jungle, but without any of those. And uh, it has brought in, if I may say so, a new energy into the Indian corporate sector and that you can do clean business, that all Indians are not corrupt and you don't need to be corrupt to be successful. How did you inculcate this? How did the leaders of this industry and TCS inculcate this? It's a very straightforward. People look up to people to see what they are practicing. Even if you go into any organization, the people who are corrupt, who demand consideration, are always singled out irrespective of the uh, environment they come from. The good people similarly for the work they do get noticed. And the alignment to that by showcasing what you are capable of doing and how you do, how you conduct is one aspect which people observe. You have to respect people that there is a continuous monitoring and an observation even though some of them may not speak about it. Second dimension that has added is without your persona being disclosed, the digital medium has provided that kind of an opportunity. And the social media has multiplied and enhanced that multiple times to talk about the good things as well as the problems as they see it. And corporations which are absolutely sensitive and particular to any noise or any chatter on the system is willing to look at it and based on the data they are willing to take actions whether on time that it should be taken. So to me the technology has enabled the propagation of the value systems of a corporation the accelerations in understanding a good versus a bad and connectivity to the topmost people has become really possible. Irrespective of the hierarchy, since that hierarchical model is completely disappearing, to reach the top man or reach anybody is in the system has become so easy and communicating them without any worries and the voice of the customer or voice of the employee has become extremely easy. So to me, here is an opportunity from a governance point of view to spread this like wildfire. That does not mean that there are no corruptions because people are as creative as anybody else in terms of the other dimension to look at possible sources of leaks. But then the whole challenge is how do you plug that? Cyber is a classic example of how that is playing out. So, you know, if you look at uh, the US, uh, of which you know a lot more than I, but my impression is that one Microsoft uh, is probably or one apple is probably bigger than our entire industry in terms of its revenue. I think we are 180, 190 billion today, hoping 220, to, 220 yeah. and hoping to become 400, 400 in a yes. few years. Uh, but they are already at 250 or 270. But they generate far less employment than us. Is that a correct statement? Yeah, because it's a product and a repeat business of a product. Whereas we are in the services industry, hence the number of people that needs to be deployed is much more. As we transition and or there are a lot of startups which are coming in the product space, I think the innovation will be a multiplication factor. If 10 people can do and do what 100 people can do, that will be the kind of uh, multiplier that you will get. Also the services industry around that product will generate a lot of jobs and that is where the services uh, numbers will keep going up. So in a sense, uh the evolution of uh, companies like TCS and the software industry in India has played to the native strengths of yes. India. Yes. Uh, you could have, people often ask, you know, why can't India have an Apple or a Microsoft uh, or a uh, Google coming from India? And I said, listen, everything has a time. And <laughs> you can't expect, why can't this 10 year old child behave like a Nobel Prize winner? Would you agree with that? That was the agreement in the past for the simple reason that the market was the US and the product was the service. Whereas today the market is a global and it could be a product and or a service. Third, if today Google or a Microsoft or an Apple or um, Facebook, they have R&D locations across the world including in India at scale. 
So when a product comes out of a Google or a Microsoft or an Apple, it or could well have come Google, out of India. This would have come out of India. It is coming out of India. So do we call it a global product or you call it a U.S. made product? The ownership may be the U.S. The investors may be more there. So people assume that uh, Google or uh, Apple is a hundred percent American. Exactly. You are saying if you actually do the math, yeah, it may turn out to be very different from hundred percent. That is the transition. From a company headquartered in the U.S. and doing services in the U.S., then internationalizing, it's called a U.S. company. A company today which is global in nature with headquarters everywhere is where the product gets built and it is a global product and India has a large share of that. I think uh, that's the change which has happened. That's a very good insight. It's a very good insight because to assume that uh, TCS is a purely Indian company is wrong. To wrong. assume that Microsoft or Google is a purely American company is wrong. And the nature of globalization is actually being demonstrated. I mean, TCS today gets its revenue, what, 85, 90% from other countries? International locations. International locations. Yeah. Obviously, the US may be 50 or 60%, but still it is diminishing from the 90% or 95% dependency. So, if we want to draw some lessons out of this uh, conversation for the future, which is really what um, our interviews are all about. In, um, you have made three or four very salient points. I am just summarizing it so that uh, my question can be framed around it. First is, all businesses are people businesses. Right. And software as a service has definitely been a people business. And you outlined many attributes of that. The second thing that you have said is that technology is driving it and young people are driving it. And so young people, technology, and their training and so on. And the third thing that you have said is, it is possible to do these things globally without in a corruption-free, friction-free environment. And therefore, you get much better velocity out of such a business. And the last thing you, I think you have alluded to is that you have to learn to scale it up. The innovation cannot just be standing by itself. So it's not a once-off like a uh, soap or a car that you have made, it has to keep on changing and you have to be able to scale it up. Now, if I put all this together and take a peek into the future, where do you see the future of the Indian, I hesitate to call it IT industry because it, I call it a knowledge industry for lack of a better word. Okay. Well, I think if you to just uh, push yourself forward to a 2030 or a 2040, what are the issues that are going to affect us both uh, socially as well as economically? Socially, the climate change and the rest of the planet is very real and people are becoming conscious of that. So any application of technology to this field and the tools and techniques for zero, net zero environment is going to play a very, very critical role and every corporation and every startup company in the IT sector or technology sector can reap the benefits of that. The scale at which this has to operate on a global basis is horrendous because when you look at the COP26, the kind of uh, numbers we have put in, including for ourselves, whether in the renewable energy space or uh, doing away with uh, uh, the coal-based uh, plants or manufacturing and the circular economy to reduce the wastage or recycle the products, I think those are kind of opportunities which are going to throw up an enormous amount of both research challenges as well as transformation challenges as well as application challenges in the new areas. And the computing power that is needed to address some of these challenges, whether it is through AI, whether it is through deep learning, deep insights, the data that is going to get generated because the edge computing as they call it and the devices that you are surrounded by, even in this room, the kind of data that we are generating just by sitting and talking, what do you do with that data to say, is this room carbon neutral? Is this room the right function? Is it good for your health? Every parameter can be monitored sitting here. And then you extend the scope of that across the city, across the countries. The opportunities are only left to your imagination rather than is there an opportunity or not. It's just the dreams and the dare to try those dreams and application of that, that will fuel an enormous amount of both social change as well as an economic change. So the, it's a speculative question, so I understand your answer will also be speculative. The frustration that we have sometimes in this country because supply uh, is nowhere near where the demand is, whether it's for education, hospitals, public health, uh, government clearances. 
how will that get impacted? How can life be better in India due to technology and the way the knowledge industry will develop, say in 30 years' time? No, I think if you go to the rural India today, and you are an expert on that because you are with a company which penetrated the rural India the most, the aspirations of the youth are unbelievable because of the communication capabilities and the connectivity capabilities we have established. Having established that the youth of this country want to make a difference to the communities in which they live instead of a migration across into the cities, which was the past model. How do you fuel that energy in the youth of our country to benefit the community and think of ideas so that the next generation adopt the technology to apply some of the things which they are doing day in and day out? Example, farming. Example, arts and artisans. Example, weavers. Example, any other industry. So with the result, the proximity of that community and what happens in that community to any industry, and that's where the supply chain issues come in. I think that's the way the youth aspirations are building up in this country. You take biodiversity and the nature preservation again, the kind of challenges that we have, the kind of challenges we need to address through technology, sensing, gathering the data and application of the data, where the collaborations come very, very effective. So these are some opportunities which I see very clearly. Entrepreneurs or micro, small and medium enterprises which may want to start in your own areas or within a 15 kilometer, 20 kilometer radius. Same thing with regard to public health, same thing with regard to any of the other things with regard to making a defense industry as an example, space industry as an example, or the EV manufacturing and the kind of scale that is needed if you want to transition to a completely zero carbon uh, mobility. So I think it is left to again keep repeating that these are the opportunities which we have a chance because of the size of our population and the connectivity which has been established through broadband, the road network that is create, getting created and the waterways that will also be done. I think we have an opportunity to service the world. When the country speaks about we can be the knowledge capital or Vishwa Guru for the world, it's really real and in my opinion it is coming through in the next 20 to 30 years. So you, let me take a um, example, the people are talking about AI, machine right. learning, you know, right. deep learning and so on and so forth as the next big or amongst the next big uh, technologies. Can you just share a few thoughts on what are the possibilities that AI can do to change this country in the next 30 years? I think security. The kind of traffic you get in railway stations, you get in bus stations, you get in the airports in terms of the road network, etc. I can virtually monitor every single happening in any of these things through a low cost deployment of cameras and then the back end analyzing the entire data. So the whole security and your comfort in moving around in the country becomes that much easier because any detection of any uh, So you can plan and say I don't require two hours to get to the airport. No. You can plan and say you can do it in two hours. But any of those security, safety issues can be addressed very easily. I think the water conservation, again as an example, you can monitor the kind of water consumption, you can monitor the kind of energy consumption, you can monitor anything and everything, your own health you can monitor by having devices, both invasive and non-invasive devices which continuously circulating to your doctor or I mean, transmitting to the hospital. I think these are some things which we could have never imagined because even to get an audience with a doctor sometimes it took a week, two weeks, month, whatever it is. But I think, and if you take a thing like a laser surgery on the eye, I mean it is automated today. Most of the surgeries are getting so automated that the expert has to be there. The expert has to think of new ways of designing the equipment that is needed for a surgery or whatever it is. Same thing drug discovery, what happened during the COVID and during the pandemic. The collaboration that took place and a platform-based collaboration with the technology underlying was able to churn out so much of data and do the genome sequencing and genome analysis of every single patient. Those are things which are unimaginable because what took 25 years, what took 10 years, what took 5 years, what took 3 years, what took is now in 15 days you are able to get the same kind of outcomes which are unimaginable and that's the technology inputs that are gone in application of that. 
Well, it's very exciting because it's not only that you have experienced personally and professionally the excitement of creating an institution of TCS. You have been a part of that journey, a very important part of the journey, but you've also seen the whole industry shaping it and you're also sharing ideas on how in the future this industry can morph and impact the life of Plain Joe in rural India uh, who has many barriers today to using the fruits of technology. Last question I want to ask you is about language. You know, Mr. Kohli was very hung up on uh, Indian language usage. It seems to be a big barrier. Can you just share a few of your insights? I mean, if I go to my your village or my village in Tamil Nadu, you know, they don't speak Hindi, they don't understand Hindi. Uh, they speak Tamil, probably they speak a smattering of English and then all these gadgets come with English on it. Can you just share how the language uh, hmm. democratization look, can happen? When you look at the startups today, I have been surveying the startups, the kind of uh, localization of software, localization of content has become a way of life. Localization meaning the language. Yes. Ah, oh, you get a signal saying which language do you want to take. Uh, right. You can key in a language, you can understand, you can get a English translation real time in Hindi or Tamil or whatever it is. So that transformation is happening. The school and the education system, if you are going to communicate and you are going to teach in a local language, at least for the first couple of years, your mindset of thinking in the local language becomes that much easier rather than thinking in English and then trying to translate into Tamil or Telugu or Hindi or whatever it is. So I think that transformation through the NEP 2020 which they have articulated, if it is implemented really, the local content and the scale at which the local content will operate will become very visible and the users automatically will adopt to that kind of a model. To me, the techniques and tools from the IITs or the triple IITs with regard to language uh, delivery and the research that has happened has been phenomenal. Just the application and people wanting to implement that. I mean, a state like UP, if it has a 200 million population and Hindi is the kind of content you want to produce, I think here is a golden opportunity if somebody really thought through it and applied it. Because out of 200 million, other than 10 million probably, nobody will know English, I think, or any other language. I would see that as an opportunity. If I had to give an advice to any of the technology companies, including TCS, they look at it as a local model for a state like UP. And automatically then the adjoining states become candidates for that. I think those are the kind of opportunities which we cannot afford to forget. Because the market size is huge. The ideas are huge. Technology space has really progressed. So when you have to combine all of this, that is when you see the opportunity. So you are saying it's our imagination that's holding us back. <laughs> Correct. Not the opportunity. Not the opportunity. So I would like to close this interview with uh, something which is very, from what you say, very energizing, uh, which I happen to agree with, by the way. Um, because what you're really saying is the old way of doing business with controls, with oversight, with if I gain, then he loses, competition has to give way yes. to enabling, letting people fly. The odd mistake, unfortunately, will happen. And understanding that my gain doesn't mean his loss, collaboration. And if a company and an industry can behave in that manner with a focus on people, technology, an application, then um, there's nothing to stop them. To nothing to stop and sky is the limit. Sky and uh, no idea is uh, to be thrown out before trying. Ram, that's a very energizing interview. Thank you. Even Omar. for an oldie like me. <laughs> because uh, you have really outlined far beyond TCS. TCS, of course, has been a great institution. But based on that, you have outlined a plan for how industries and companies can create a great future for this country. On behalf of LHI, Live History India, I would like to thank you for your time. And I hope that viewers will appreciate that the lessons that they can draw out of this kind of uh, experience that you have narrated will be valuable for the time that they spend on it.
Great, Ram. That means you are seeing a future of people and technology driving India. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for your time.